Welcome my peeps, my peoples. Please like, comment, subscribe, share the video. It'd be greatly appreciated from the bottom of my heart, my peeps, my peoples. So let's talk about Married to Medicine. Season 5, episode 18, The Reunion. We are done. This is it. It is over until next season. Boy, did Andy make, you know, um, Dr. G look bad. Talk about, ain't you a psychiatrist? Can you handle this? It's like, yo, like, damn, what's going on? What do we go from here? How do we do this, Mr. Psychiatrist? I was like, oh, shit. So anyways, we start off where we ended off last week when we start to talk about Quad and Dr. G and maybe him having a affair and doing the dirty deed. But it seems like he didn't do the dirty deed. He just went to the hotel with another woman. He thought about it, but he changed his mind. So Quad goes, Quad says when her husband went back to the hotel room with the woman, um, basically, and the woman tried to, this woman tried to extort you know, Dr. G, she tried to get money from him, basically. I guess she tried to care and haunt him, try to, get him <laughs> try to get him caught like that. Where was that camera phone? She didn't take no pictures? I guarantee you it's on somebody's blog right now, whoever this woman is, because now she's probably asking for attention and seeking attention, basically, because she has been brought up on the show. So if this, if this happened a year ago, why are we only hearing about this now? How in the hell did Dr. G and Quad keep this quiet? So now we know why quad has been acting up all season and upset and mad because you know she's going through these trials and tribulations with her husband possibly cheating on her and then getting extorted and then on top of that hearing about jackie's situation knowing that she was steps away so now we understand why quad was so emotional about jackie's situation and she was just arguing with her husband about it and he was getting into it now we see why dr g was defending curtis because he was in the same predicament, but he just didn't stick his wee-wee in. Supposedly, that's what it said. So now we understand why Kwa was just all over the place and she wasn't getting any support. And basically, some of the ladies was coming for her and they didn't even know she was going through this terrible, tumultuous relationship with Dr. G. Dr. G is an honorary, terrible, terrible mother tucker. I mean, like, he can't admit when he's wrong. He can't admit when he does something wrong. It's just like he's so honorary. It's like he need a wife from the 20s, you know, from the 30s. Like, my God, Dr. G, like, just own up to it. I know Quad is difficult to deal with. I know Quad has a strong personality. She's a strong woman, and she's tick for tat, but damn. Don't make yourself look this bad on TV. It's like, yo, you made yourself look real bad. So anyways, Dr. G was like, you know what? I told my wife. And Kwa was like, hold on. No, you didn't tell me. I find out, I found out about it through the grapevine. I, You know, some people told me, the streets were talking to me and was telling me this information. And basically that you went back to a hotel, a hotel room with this girl. And then on top of that, that she was going to try to bring it to the shade room. The shade room is popping. So anyway, somebody out there in these streets like Quad and got her back to make sure this story did not embarrass her or her family. Basically, she told her own truth. Dr. G told his own truth tonight on the reunion show, and it wasn't ex it, it, it wasn't being exposed on the blog. So you got to give them cute kudos for that because somebody is feeling them out there in these streets. So anyways... Dr. G was like, oh, it happened a long time ago. And sh and there was he was like a year. And Kawhi was like, it wasn't a long time ago. It was a year. And all the ladies agree that it, it was just a year ago. That's that's recent. That's recent. And, you know, Kawhi was like, you know, um, she wished that her, she wished her husband would have took the approach of Curtis and actually took ownership of his behavior and what he did was what was wrong. Well, damn, you didn't act like that this season. You was dogging out Curtis. But we also understand why because you was going through the same thing but Curtis did own up to what he did and he did not blame his wife he did not blame Dr. Jackie so anyways you know um <laughs> and so Quas says you know you know Dr. G honorary ass came home and tried to blame her and said to her what you gonna do um he came home and blamed me are you going to help me or what this girl is trying to extort me should I pay her or should I get the police involved I was like oh shit Mm, mm, mm. So what did they do? Pay her or did they get the police involved? I, I, I totally missed that part. So do, did they pay her off or they got the police involved? What happened? Um, so anyways, <laughs> I can't believe it. I think I need to go back and watch it. I'm tired. So anyways, Andy was looking like in like shock. Andy was like, oh my God, this is great ratings. This is great for TV. Everybody else is looking at, you know, 
um, at Dr. G, like, damn, looking at Quad, like, damn, this motherfucker came home and asked you what he should do. Well, basically, that means for him to come home and ask Quad that, he knows that Quad has his back. He know Quad was going to, you know, take care of things. She was going to take up take care of business she was gonna hide the mess because he couldn't do it on his own so now he's a actually admitting that he does need quad that quad is essential and important in his life which he tries to minimize her her um her contributions to their marriage and he's always trying to minimize it and obviously her contributions are very high because why would he come to her and tell her I need help because he knows that she can help him she know he knows she got his back because she could have used this as a big old storyline but it's it's good that she used it for the reunion because it went they went out with a bang 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 <laughs> and so everybody's looking like oh my god what kind of shit is that could you imagine your husband talking about somebody's about to extort me well you know what you do you have you know quad is a real one she made sure she got the shit got the shit together with the shade room she made sure she got the information together talk to the girl or whatever whatever she however she you know cured that problem or at least hit it for a little while she did that for herself and she did that for her marriage too as well because she could have been on here really playing like the victim all season but you know jackie jackie took that avoidance with her cheating scandal so it kind of took the heat off her quad really you know and quad didn't even talk to none of these ladies and tell them what was going on so Quad knows how to keep a secret. And does that mean Quad is really friends with these ladies on stage where she didn't tell them her deepest, darkest secret? Is she smart enough to know better? Is she smart to know just like, you know, Dr. Heavenly, Dr. Heavenly, don't expose her business or tell her secrets to none of these ladies on stage. So, you know, Quad is also, she has book sense and she has common sense as well. Dr. G has common sense too as well by letting them know. She was, and then Dr. G was like, um, <laughs> and Dr. G, because I, Dr. G was like, you know, he was like, I didn't do it. So they asked, you know, you know, Auntie asked Dr. G if he had sex with her or he did. He was like, no, I didn't do it. Everyone was like, what? He was like, no, I didn't do it. I didn't do that. I didn't do that. You know, basically he's just saying like, yo, I went back to the hotel room with her, but I didn't do that. And so, you know, basically people are telling, you know, uh, that you know dr g needs to have a humble pie basically have some humble pie have some humble pie whatever he's like i can't He was like i don't need to have a humble pie i don't need to be humble and all kissy kissy you know why because i didn't do it only thing i did was went to the hotel room with her i did not do that i did not do it basically <laughs> curtis was like yo you need to own up to what you did you need to you can't say i'm sorry but i didn't do that or you you can't just say oh I was wrong, but I wasn't all the way wrong. I, you know, I went back to the hotel room with her, but I didn't do it. You know what I mean? So it's just like, you know, Dr. G is not listening to any of the that's on stage. The men, you know, are trying to tell him to own up to what he did and basically don't, don't use the word, but basically what Dr. Jackie was saying too as well. And was like, just take ownership that you messed up and you was wrong and trying to get it better. But he was like, I really wasn't that wrong. I wasn't all the way wrong. I was wrong for going to the hotel room with her. I was wrong for getting the hotel room. You are mad man and you're on tv there's no way that you should be getting in a room with other women you know what i mean but sometimes when people are not satisfied at home they go out they go out elsewhere looking for other things most of the time they think the grass is greener on the other side and now dr g realized the grass ain't greener on the other side you know why because the woman that he was about to get do the nuki nuki tuki tuki with she was about to extort she was trying to extort him and get money from him so she wasn't feeling him she wasn't attracted to him she didn't want to be with him she just wanted to get some money out of him she wanted to get some ducats she wanted to get that corn that cheddar that paper that cat she want that clout she, she was clout chasing <laughs> so anyways it is what it is dr g i could not i could not i could not with dr g there's no way there's no there's no amount of money in the world so quad has to love dr g because there's no way in the world i could put up with dr g there's no way that we could be in the same room together because he does not feel like he does anything wrong and he's quick to point out what she does and you know ma no matter how much he points out how quad is wrong he she didn't she didn't almost attempt to cheat on him you know he brought a woman to the hotel room he was about to cheat on her if he did if he didn't i don't know he said he didn't but who knows i wasn't there we wasn't there my peeps my peoples <laughs> so 
Anyways, please like, comment, subscribe, share the video, hit that like button. It'll be greatly appreciated from the bottom of my heart, Mary Jane. So anyways, I was just like, damn, Dr. G, like, yo, you go overboard, you know. And it's just like, Dr. G doesn't feel like he, he doesn't think that he was all the way wrong because he didn't do it. He got the hotel room and all this other stuff. He said he went back to the hotel room with the woman and he just realized he didn't want to do it. So she stayed there overnight. So what? Was she a peasant? She didn't have I, like I wouldn't stay in a, ho a room overnight if I know you ain't coming back. I'm not staying in a hotel room. We ain't sleeping together. So basically this woman didn't have nowhere to sleep, nowhere to stay <laughs> that you had to pay for her hotel room or that was just the bargain. So basically Dr. G said um, the receipt was thrown under the door. You no, know, Dr. G, you should have got that receipt. If you paid for the hotel room, you you should have got the receipt then and there from the hotel. Like, so he doesn't have, he doesn't really have that much com common sense. He just have a lot of book sense. That's it that Dr. G has because he should have made sure there was no evidence left over. Curtis tried his best to cheat, but the woman ended up, <laughs> Curtis was going to different hotel rooms under assumed name. And, but basically he got caught because I guess the woman wanted to put the story out there and let the people know. So it is what it is with that situation. So, you know, Dr. G really doesn't think that he was deceitful because he didn't stay with her. He left. He left the woman in the room, basically. And, you know, and after that, she wanted to blackmail him. So it is what it is. <laughs> And so then this gives Simone, this gives Simone the reason to yell, gives Simone the reason to scream and yell and say, don't you understand guys? Don't you understand men that these, you guys are on TV and these bitches going to come after you and get you and use you and take you and get whatever they want from you and embarrass you. You guys are targets and she's yelling and she's screaming and Cecil just like, I don't know how you do it, Cecil. I have no idea. Dr. G and Cecil are two people that I could not be around they yell you know Simone is Simone is wicked when she wants to be and she's vicious when she wants to be with her yelling in her tone not letting anybody get anything else to say and so basically you know Curtis jumps in <laughs> Curtis jumps in don't you think we know that by now don't you know if you knew it you would have never got caught and if you knew it you would have never cheated on Jackie so no you don't know and obviously Dr. G doesn't know because he got caught out there and obviously Aiden doesn't know because Aiden was cheating, cheated on Mariah, but I don't know when he cheated on Mariah, cheated on Mariah, cheated on Mariah. <laughs> I'm like, yo. Yeah. <laughs> so right now we got Dr. Damon, we got Dr. Eugene, and we have Cecil, <laughs> right? That have not been caught in a cheating scandal or, you know what I mean? So it is what it is. So anyways, um... So that gives, you know, Simone the reason to yell and, and just scream at people. I'm just, like, looking at her like, damn. And so Andy was like, okay, yeah, just look at Andy's face. That's when he hears about the blackmail situation. He's like, damn, it's really going down out, out on these streets and married to medicine. Like, women out here trying to blackmail Dr. J. He's only a psychiatrist. He don't got that much money, baby. So anyways, Andy was like, oh, I got to clean up my closet. I got to give, I got to keep more tidy before somebody put, <laughs> spill my tea. <laughs> so anyways, you know, it is what it is. <laughs> and Dr. G was like, you know, I just want her to be transparent. You know, like, you know, quad is never transparent. She doesn't put me first and all this other stuff. Basically, Dr. G is still trying to throw the blame at quad. You know what I mean? And, and it's not a good look. You know, I don't know if they're having sex or not. But, you know, he tried to go outside of his marriage and look what happened to him. So he should have stayed at home and stayed with his wife and try to work it out. Try to seek out some type of help because something is not working with their relationship. It's just like, um, especially with him, you know, out here with this other woman and maybe they're not sleeping together. A lot of hostility and hatred I think they have for one another have built up along the years because one not giving the other this it's like they did everything to get each other but they're not doing everything they can to stay together and respect each other because they know what each other want it's the same thing they wanted from the beginning they wanted at the end too as well and you know dr g stepping trying to step out on quad was really a bad decision so where do we go from here so basically they got to pick up the pieces and move forward and see how they can move forward see if it's actually if they're actually able to but dr g is going to have to change i don't know if you can teach an old dog new tricks i don't know if dr g wants to change but you know quad is tired of being tired of the same shit tired of the same old shit 
And, you know, like she said that she has some fault too as well. That It's not totally Dr. G's fault. It's not totally Quad's fault. It's both of their faults because they got to be, they got to be a way they can able to get one another's attention and actually talk like, where's the love where they can say, baby, this is what I need. Baby, this is what I want. Baby, how can we do this together? How can we work on this? How? What can we do to make it better? You know what? You want a child? I'll give you a child. But you know what? Can we work on these parts of our relationship? And so we can bring our child into a loving atmosphere. And also, you know, him supporting Quad, taking out the trash, showing up to any types of book engagement, food engagement, or anything that she's doing, show up to her job, you know what I mean, bring her candy, bring her roses, bring her flowers, you know, sing, you know, I remember this one guy, he used to, to his wife, he used to always call her and say, baby, I just call to say, I love you, by Stevie Wonder, he used to do shit like that, you know what I mean, and they didn't even have money like that, so... We'll we'll see where it goes from there, but you know, Doctor G feels like he doesn't get any he doesn't get any props for you know actually coming to Quad and Quad was like you actually didn't come to me. I found out through the grapevine you had then you had no other choice but to come to me. He was like I can't get a, a, like a little bit of props. No, because you're looking for props because you're looking like you did something good. You're looking like oh well I didn't go all the way. Oh well I did tell you out of my own mouth. No, you shouldn't have never done it in the first place. And so therefore you don't get any clout for just telling me that oh there's women coming after me or whatever. So it is what it is with that situation. Dr. G doesn't get it. I don't know if he will ever get it. I think he really needs to sit down with a guy that he really respects that is away from TV and away from television where it can actually show him how he actually supposed to treat a woman that he loves and that he doesn't want no one else to be with, you know? Because, you know, if Dr. G didn't go all the way with this woman, that means something stopped him, love stopped him. Something stopped him from going there with the other woman. And he has to find that emotion that stopped him from going there with that other woman to try to fix his marriage. So, basically, he ain't listened to nobody. He ain't listened to... And and that's the thing. Him and Quad don't listen to nobody. They basically stuck in their feelings and that's it. And then... Because this... Throughout the season, people tried to talk to Quad about her situation and how to how to be like this and how to be like that, but she wasn't hearing it. But we understand why she really wasn't hearing it because she couldn't tell them the truth because they really ain't her friends. Mm-mm-mm. So anyways, <laughs> um, Dr. G, Dr. G is just like, I'm trying to fight for my marriage and all this other stuff. Then Mariah jumps in and Mariah, was, Mariah tries to be helpful, but she's not really helpful because it's like Mariah could, she feels bad, but she also pr- kind of seems like she's in, she's masking in the joy of quad breaking down in her situation that she's not going through but mariah's already been cheated on so maybe she's not but so what are they gonna say about you know dr g first mariah was coming at quad from not for wanting too much demanding too much but this man's about to go be with another woman but something stopped him and he didn't do it so we'll see what happens with that situation so then so we get to Simone and Cecil Simone and Cecil oh my god they talk about the kids you know they talk about Michael's having a difficult time about them getting divorced and Miles is okay but they can't really tell how Miles is really feeling about the situation because Miles is just like his father so basically him being just like his father he it's hard for him to express himself and he's very Un- unattached you know what I mean like you can't read his emotion like you know he got the perfect poker face basically but Michael it, it, it could be a situation it was just talking about how everything was supposed to be going so well and it's not and so basically now we find out about this girl named Tammy this girl named Tammy she's she's a situation but it just seems like Simone was just done and too through with Cecil, Cecil that she did not want to be married to him she she was like Cecil don't need to change Cecil don't need to do anything leave Cecil alone you know what I mean the divorce paper are already worked out everything's signed everything's divided all we have to do is get home and Cecil just has to sign the papers that's it and you got Toya throwing in that oh look at Cecil Cecil said he loved Tammy he loved her friendship but he never said that he loved you know Simone or he wanted to fight for his marriage and then I think that something clicked in Cecil's head but Cecil never wanted to get a divorce and Cecil brought it up all season that Simone when they get into arguments she threatens divorce she's threatened divorce even though she really don't want no fucking divorce but she threatens it but I don't know if the cast 
and being on TV actually pressured Simone and Cecil to try to work it out. Um, actually made them have a change of heart, but I don't know if it was genuine, if their change of heart was actually genuine if or if it was forced because everybody was down their throat. And, you know, you, you're, you're surrounded by everybody that's married and things like that. So, and people putting the pressure down on them because, but Simone was fighting it off at first. Simone was like, I don't want to hear it. We already separated. It's good. Like, we, we have an amicable separation. When we go to Miles' games, when we go to Michael's games, I sit on one end, he sits on the other end. And Miles feel, and Michael feels this kind of weird, but I, it, it is fucking weird. <laughs> If it's or if it's amicable, why are you sitting on the other side of the gym and he's sitting on the other side of the gym if it's amicable? Basically, then you stand, you sell one of them houses. Please sell one of them houses. But you know, Doctor Simone is just really. She was like, he don't tell me that he loves me. He don't call me at work. He don't do this. He don't do that. Well, then Simone, won't you call him? Won't you tell him you love him? Won't you make time for him? Won't you do this? Won't you stop yelling? Won't you, when he comes home, you just be butt naked, ready to give it to him, have the have the wine going or something? But you gotta put effort in too. And I understand it's a big situation where you know. Um, um, Cecil having a, a best friend named Tammy that's all in the situation like I said in my other video I would not be able to it all depends on how I feel the relationship is but I don't really want my husband to be have a best friend that is a woman I, I don't really care especially if I feel like she's becoming in between the relationship and he's more connected to her emotionally and I think Simone is jealous because of that emotional connection but Cecil and Simone had that emotional connection at one point because at one point you know Simone's sister was saying Cecil and Simone they wouldn't go nowhere without each other it was always together something came you know Simone got busy Simone became a big doctor so that had changed so she under she knows the emotional connection that you know Cecil has with this woman Tammy and and it hurts it's not cheating um, I mean it's emotionally like cheating because when Cecil Cecil's not really alone Cecil's not lonely Cecil's not by himself because he has a friend he has a partner that uh, is the opposite sex and it's probably she probably has a lot of skills and a lot of qualifications and a lot of um things that Cecil desires in a woman that he desires in Simone and Simone doesn't have and you know she feels a tidbit bit jealous about that too as well and then Simone said the woman came to her house <clears throat> And stay for eight days. Oh no, you wouldn't have stayed in my house for eight days. How did that fly, Simone? You yell, you scream, you shout, you holler, and you let this happen? I'm like, whoa, come on, Simone. You let that go down? And see, so if the woman stayed in Atlanta and you know your wife have a problem with her, why would you let her stay in the house for eight days? Because see, so don't want see see so want peace in the house i guess i don't know but it sounds like that was a miscarriage of just a miscarriage <laughs> of judgment that Cecil actually you know did because if it bothers his wife he shouldn't have had her around but i guess he wants a buddy he wants a friend he wants somebody to talk to because him and simone ain't friends they haven't been friends for a long time and simone was like oh five years ago last episode was 11 years ago now five years ago you know we, we grew apart this happened that happened simone you got busy and you working like you even you you go on trips you know Cecil did not want you to go to Louisiana he was like let's stay here and work on our marriage and you was down to go you was down to bounce or whatever but he was down to go play golf too as well so anyways um Cecil feels really hurt and everybody's trying to get Cecil and Simone to kind of like reconcile or try to stop the divorce or whatever uh, or just wait on wait before they move forward on it so then we also find we also find out that you know Cecil just explains he's about action. Like, he doesn't say, I love you, whatever. He's, he, he's about action. Let me tell you, that's what I'm about. I'm about action. Actions speak louder than words. I whether my man's actions speak for himself than his words because words ain't shit. You know what? The action, show, you can show how much you love me by the, doing the things that you do, by treating me, by treating me nice, by treating me respectful, doing the things that I, I desire for you to do, by taking that extra step to make me happy, by taking that extra step to make me feel good and doing the things that a husband's supposed to do. That's actually way more. Could, people can say, I love you, and be sleeping with the neighbor next door. You know what I mean? So his action, he's not cheating on you, but I guess it feels like cheating with his friend. And, you know, all the people are trying to convince Cecil 
to, you know, break off his relationship with Tammy or whatever. And he was like, he was kind of thinking about it because, you know what, she is a friend. It's just like if you're in a relationship with somebody and then they don't want you to be with your friend and you've been knowing your friend for years and you got to let him go. But it all depends on who you want to be with most, who you love most, and which is more important. It, it, I, it would be sad to see if Cecil breaks up with Tiffany as a friend and then Simone still leaves them in the first place. But if it's a real friend, they'll come back. And if it's a real friend, they'll understand. Because um, I had a friend at one point in time, her, you know, boyfriend didn't like me or whatever. Or didn't want her to hang out with me because, you know, there was in a relationship. And I was like, yo, that's your man. Do your thing. I'll see you on the flip side. And then I seen her on the flip side because he disappeared. <laughs> so it's all good. So anyway, Cecil decides to let her, to let his best friend go. And then, you know, Toya goes to let Jackie know, to let, you know, Simone know that, you know, um, Cecil agreed to get rid of, you know, Tammy. And it seems like that's all Simone wanted was him to get rid of Tammy. Did Simone ever tell him that she wanted Tammy gone? Because Cecil said that, you know, Simone appreciated Tammy. She liked Tammy. Tammy was there. Tammy helped. Tammy was always around. But I guess, you know, their bond and their relationship with Cecil and Tammy grew so much that Simone felt like an outsider in the friendship or in her marriage. And I guess, you know, Tammy came in. But I would like to hear Tammy's side. I would like to hear what Tammy got to say. Where's Tammy? I hope Tammy's on next season. Tammy, start a blog. Tammy, get on live and let us know what's going on. <laughs> And so, anyway, so some so Toya switches seats out with you know Cecil, and basically, you know some um, Cecil said he's willing to work, he's willing to fight, and he loves his wife and he wants to be friends with her. But Cecil also has some stipulation too as well. He wants Simone to spend more time with him. He wants Simone to be more caring and more loving, and actually listen to some of the things, some of his requests, and stop abandoning him, and because he feels lonely in his marriage. The same thing Curtis was saying. So you know, you don't usually have a man begging for attention, but begging for you know, you know spending want to spend time with you and, and so you know Cecil also throws up that you know they was by the you know the counselor that they, that they were seeing asked both of them to write love letters to each other and Cecil said he took it very serious and he takes the counseling very serious and he wrote a lovely love note to Simone what what I love you 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 on it and Simone wrote her letter while driving in the car so Simone is not putting in all the effort and one thing about Simone is when you call Simone on her shit when Cecil calls Simone on her shit and, and what she does she gets upset she gets defensive and she's ready to say oh you don't gotta change well we're still getting divorced it's over or whatever because she doesn't want to she doesn't want to hear that she's doing wrong Cecil may not want to hear he's doing wrong but he'll own up to it Simone don't want to own up to her to to her not fulfilling her duties to it as well as a wife same as Cecil but at least Cecil's owning up to Simone though Simone was trying to brush off Cecil's feelings and what he was saying about counseling with oh we're just gonna get a divorce we're just gonna get a divorce it's like damn do you want to be with him or do you not want to and it seems like Simone you know She's been throwing that divorce up, divorce up, divorce up. So now she got so backed up to the divorce where Cecil just let it happen. You know what? You want to keep saying divorce? Well, I'm going to keep quiet and just let it happen. And that seemed like that's what happened. And then it got to the 11th hour. And all of a sudden, they're saying, I'm sorry. And they're going to change. And Jackie's all up in the mix. Jackie, sit your ass down. Get out their face like these couples talk. We don't need you all up in the middle. Deliver babies, baby. So... And even though you're trying to be supportive, but back, back, move back, or whatever. So, um, Cecil was like, well, he, Cecil wants Simone to spend more time with him. She, He wants more time. He wants to be friends. You know, a man that want, your man, your husband wants to go out with you. He wants to hang out with you. He wants to spend time with you. He wants to, you know, if we fall asleep watching movies, he wants you to make him a little bit of priority in his life. And he said he understands that he is married to a doctor. He understands that she's busy. He understands that she's tired. But other people have the same type of life and they make time. You know, they ain't the first couples. You know, you know she ain't the first doctor that's been married. 
people make time for who they want to make time for. And so then Simone goes in, well, I'm tired. I be busy. You know, I got two jobs. Well, you chose to be on the show. I thought the show wasn't a problem. She was like, oh, I'm working. I'm shooting on the show that I'm working as a doctor. I be tired. I be exhausted. I be this and that. But you chose that. You choosing the show over your husband. You choosing the show over spending time. And she was like, well, I even tell my friends on Friday. I can't have Friday lunch. I can't hang out with them. Forget your friends. You want Cecil to forget his friends. Make that time for your husband. Simone, call Cecil. Tell him that you love him. Call Cecil and, and come over to send Cecil flowers. Send him some candy. Send him a fruit basket. Let him know you love him too. That like he ain't the only one in this marriage because he wants emotional support too. He wants love too. And like Cecil said, actions speak louder than words, baby. And I'm trying to tell you so many women will want Cecil because he's about action. Action is action with the end. Action. Work and work. Let me stop. I'm tired. I'm sleepy. That's why. So anyways... It is what it is. So they are going to, they have come to an agreement where they are going to try to both fight for their marriage. And Simone finally agrees to let go. And she, and she realized that she, she'd been realized, but she went too far with the situation. I don't know if, you know, Dr. You know, Dr. Simone is going to continue to work on her marriage or is she going to run away? Cause it seems like she just wants, you know, Curtis to change. And she doesn't, and it seems like Dr. Simone wants Cecil to change. It doesn't seem like she wants to change. So she, it seems like Simone only feels like um, Cecil has the problem. Cecil has the issue. Cecil this. And that's why Cecil was like, well, you know, you got to change too, baby. I want this and I want that too as well. So we're going to try to see if, they're going to, if there's going to be any wiggle room for the situation where they actually might try to work it out. Because you know what? Like Dr. Damon said, there's like uh, uh, people coming after marriages. It just seems like breaking up the home, especially you don't really see so many black homes together on TV where you have a mother, a father, both susceptible and basically uh, parenting and, you know, in a marriage. In a, and um, he doesn't want to see that broken up because you got all other types of craps on TV showing, showing a positive image. You know, kids going to college, kids going to school, kids doing something, kids making something out of their life. And basically, you know, so we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens with this situation. It seems like it's, it's like, damn, we'll see what happens. So Cecil made the choice to get rid of Tammy. And basically, Cecil wants sex too as well. Cecil wants some sex. He wants some sex from Simone. He wants some sex from Simone. That's what he wants. And so we'll see what happens. We, right now they in limbo. So supposedly Simone's going to call the lawyer. So we'll see what happens with this situation. And basically we move on to Quad. And Quad doesn't know what she's going to do at this point. She does not have no idea what she's going to do or where they're going to go with, you know, Dr. G. But if, if they can't work it out, they both probably need to move forward. And Dr. G really needs to get him a stay-at-home wife, a stay-at-home mom, if he really wants to have kids before he gets 60, if he's not going to change or work on himself as well. And so um, Dr. Heavily feels like now she can be more open about her marriage, and maybe we'll see that next season because she, did, she didn't understand the struggles they go through. But she did what she, Dr. Heavily did say one thing, you either piss on the pot or get off the pot basically I thought that was funny that's the old school saying so basically that is about it and um Cecil wants Simone to make sacrifices and Simone wants Cecil to make sacrifices but once you know Cecil said he'll get rid of his best friend Simone was ready to be back with him is that all Simone wanted I wonder if they actually going to work on it. Curtis actually cried. And you don't get men crying a lot, especially black men crying, especially proud men. And I don't think he wanted to give up. And at the end of the day, I think the ultimatum and being so forceful, Simone probably realized this is not what she wanted or they was forced to by the cast members. So anyways, peace. I'm out. One love.